guys, quick little follow-up. Okay, as you guys know, I have more than a slight addiction to adorable squirtables and this like from Hunky Dory. Okay, oh, I got an addiction to Hunky Dory. Let's get this straight right now. Hunky Dory and Heartfelt Creations and La La Land stamps. Oh my gosh. Anyway, so <sighs> what did I get? Well, not so much what did I get. What did I do? As you can see, I have some cut papers in here. This is the Woodland Stories pack. And what I did was, and this is just going to be a quick little talk through because I, uh, I haven't, oh, that's not it. Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Yes, it is. See, well, you're not going to be able to see because I did this one in pencil. What I did was I cut it down, used my cinch machine, my little mini cinch machine, and I made a little flip book it booklet because what I find I tend to do is I'm working on stuff and then I'll find these packets afterwards and I'll go oh I wish I had remembered that I had that color that color would have been perfect okay so what I did was I took a full sheet of paper okay and I cut it down okay I took a full sheet of paper and I cut it down to, all right, eight and a quarter, which is the normal height of an A2 paper. So it's the height times six and three quarters. Because these I plan to use in a book. And you need to have a half an inch for gusset, okay? Because this goes in in about a half an inch, okay? So I went in about a half, about that much, okay? And then I was left with this long piece of paper. Oh my gosh, it was a long piece of paper. Like this. Well, this these two don't match up, but, okay? And it was eight and a half, no, eight and a quarter, eight and a quarter, by four and seven eighths. And I thought, oh my God, that's such a strange number. Other than having it for scrap, what can I use it for? Well, what I did was I then cut these, okay, at the four by seven and eighths. Okay, that's whatever the leftover is after I cut off the six and three quarters. All right, and then I cut one half, one part down to four inches. So that leaves this one as four and seven eighths by four and a quarter. Okay. So these are now my scrap. These are what I used to make my book. Okay. Now it just happens that since these are four inches, okay, we'll go with this one. This one will be easier to show. In the cinch, little mini cinch machine, okay, they have on their um, numbers, okay, and this lines up perfectly between four and four, and it puts the holes right dead center of the page, okay. So these holes are dead center in the page. So I have three on this side, three on this side, but they're dead center of the page. And it's easy enough to line up. I find I am comfortable punching through two sheets of the adorable scoreable at a time. Um, I could probably do more. They say you can do up to 10 sheets of plain paper. Okay. And then the covers all right I simply made out of a regular eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper and I originally had cut them in the in the the top fold uh, hot dog style um, bun uh, the case so it was four and a quarter by the eleven 
and when I opened it up, I found that it was kind of, it, it just didn't, it didn't look right. It didn't feel right. It didn't fold right. So then I just split it in half. Okay. So I cut a eight and a half by 11 inch sheet into four pieces in the A2 size. And that works perfect. Now the question is, what do I do for the cover? Uh, the original idea was that I cut this part out and glue this on because then I know exactly what it is. Problem being, if I cut that out, then I won't know what it is in the package. I am going to take and Xerox or Xerox. I'm going to, I'm going to photocopy this part right here. Okay. And then cut that to fit. And that should be just perfect. It won't damage this and it, it should not violate copyright laws. It should not infringe that because I'm just using it as a cover for my book. And then, and then what I was thinking was, since these ones are split up according to what pack they are, such that this one is Woodland Stories. This one is, uh, oh, you know what? I didn't mark this one yet. This one is my autumn plaid or my, my seasonal plaids. Uh, this one is my Velvet Lux. My um, Bygone Blooms. But you, you can see where I'm going with this, right? And my wonderful wood or wonders of wood or whatever that one is. Okay. And then I'll have this one of the, the colorful of the color, color, color carnival. Okay. But that's only one way that I can do these. Remember these use the four inch pieces. I still got four and a quarter inch pieces. Well, I was thinking about it, and now I'm thinking the four and a quarter inch pieces could be books of their own. But, but, what I need to do is split them up according to their colors. Okay? That way I have these, I can reference these by both the pack that they came in in the colors that they are. Things such as the colossal colors or the co carnival is going to drive me a little wonky because they have several different colors in them. They are rainbow colored. So I will have to have a multicolor feature or some sort like that. So, but these will get a different treatment because they're going to get, have to get sorted back and forth. And it's going to, these ones are going to be really hard to do that way. Whereas these ones will be much easier. I mean, pinks and blues and greens and darker green because I'll probably go a light green and a dark dark green tans that type of thing or a yellow you know that's going to be fairly easy to do um multicolored ones such as these plaids those will be easier to do I'll just treat them like I would a solid it's like this would go in the greens that'll go in the greens that'll go in the yellow That'll go in the blue. This one is, this one to me is more yellow than pink. And this one to me is more purple than yellow. So I would do it 
that way. Okay. But that's just a follow-up for those. So one thing I did, I have been finding is I am not very good at crunching my cinch ends. I don't know if you guys can see these or not. They are pretty boogered up. I mean, I have smashed the daylights out of them. Um, and I don't know if it's the, the wires themselves or if it's the way that I'm putting them in. They come like a C, okay, and you're supposed to put them in this way and then crunch it down. And it's supposed to stay a beautiful circle. Mine do not. Mine become these crunched little, I mean, look at this one, okay? It's, it's boogered. I mean, there's no other way to say it. It is boogered. And I don't know what I did wrong. I really don't. So, I don't remember having this much trouble with my big one. But with this little one, maybe it's the, the materials that they're using to make the, the things out of. So, oh, well, I've got a couple of the spiral bound ones. So, and, and the nice thing about the cinch is if you have the old spiral notebooks, okay, you can unbend the ends and twirl out that spine, the, the, the coil. You know what? Hang on a second. Okay, I found I had brought these up. I forgot that I had done this. All right, so if you have old spiral notebooks, you know, like the kind that you used to get in high school, okay? Well, if you were like me, you really enjoyed the big, thicker ones that were multi-subject and they had the metal coil. Well, what you do is you unbend one of the ends, okay? And then you just coil it out, just like this, okay? You just twist it, and you can see how that worked its way out from my finger over here. I didn't pull it, I just coiled it out, all right? You do that all the way up the length, and then you have that spring that you can use inside of one of your books. Okay. This is the size. This is a, I want to say this is a one inch. Maybe it's a little bigger than an inch. No, this is a one inch. Okay. This is a one inch piece. All right. This is the size I would use for my um, color ones because those ones are going to get thick. All right, so just so you know. Okay, guys, that's it. I'm done. I'm finished. I'm kaputzed. I will talk to you all later. Bye-bye.